So Adam Eve recently received her own prequel episode for season two of Invincible, and since we've already covered her entire history within the comic books, I thought now would be the best time to start power scaling the Invincible universe and show you guys just how powerful these characters truly are. Since Adam Eve is fresh in everyone's mind, it makes sense to begin with her. Keep in mind that we will be discussing the comic book version, so any TV show discrepancies will not be considered for this video. So with all that being said, how powerful is Adam Eve? Samantha was a child who was conceived under the watchful eye of the US government, who were attempting to create the perfect weapon to defend US interests. This perfect specimen, Samantha, had everything that they could ever want, extreme power with the ability to warp reality at a whim. The doctor who created her, Dr. Elias Brandyworth, ended up switching Samantha at birth with another couple's child whom they believed died during childbirth. Throughout her early development, Samantha showed a natural and extreme understanding of atomic science. She was so knowledgeable that she was considered a gifted student and was admitted to a school for gifted youngsters. Samantha learned at a young age that she had the ability to rearrange molecules on a subatomic level, meaning essentially she could manipulate matter at will. To explain this better, we are shown Samantha turning her chicken dinner into a cheeseburger, but as Samantha grows and practices more, she is able to do this with extreme proficiency. Basically, she can see the subatomic structure of any item and rearrange those subatomic structures to turn that item into whatever she needs or wants it to be. However, she had limiters slash safeguards placed upon her as a mental block that disallowed her from manipulating the matter of living beings. Dr. Brandyworth placed these within Samantha as he believed she would essentially be a god and no one should ever be that powerful. But under certain circumstances, usually involving intense emotional outbursts, Adam Eve can bypass the safeguards placed within her mind to access her full power. Within this full power stage, she is able to freely manipulate the molecules of living beings, and because of her innate understanding of molecular structures and their relationships, the possibilities are literally endless. She could rearrange the molecules of someone to turn them into a completely different person with new memories and an entirely new life made up from Eve's choosing. Again, this is just one possibility of an infinite number. She could turn a person into a dog or turn a dog into an alien creature that she just made up from her own imagination. Using her subatomic manipulation, she can fly by lowering the density of the air around herself. She can create force fields and other various constructs, much like a Green Lantern can in DC Comics. She's used her powers to create armor and even weapons. She can fire incredible blasts of energy that were powerful enough to burn the skin off of Conquest, one of the most powerful Viltrumites in the entire series who even Omni-Man was afraid of, and in an altercation with Omni-Man, Conquest was able to draw blood. When calculated, the amount of energy required to harm Conquest would need to be enough to destroy multiple continents, requiring 1.8 exatons of energy to do so. This comes from the feat of Thetis, Mark, Omni-Man, and Space Racer destroying the planet Viltrum. And since Conquest is relative to Omni-Man, we can scale this to Eve, who was able to burn off all of Conquest's skin. This level of power is supported during the Invincible War, where Eve is able to kill an alternate universe version of Mark. While these Invincibles may not scale exactly to blue suit Mark, it is a nice piece of supporting evidence to show Eve's incredible raw power output. However, Eve's durability is nowhere near her energy blasts. Think of her as a glass cannon, unless she has, you know, donned her construct armor, which would obviously make her much, much more durable. Robert Kirkman explains that Eve's constructs can be as powerful, if not more powerful, than the Viltrumites in these fights, but during these battles she is forced to react and think too quickly due to the Viltrumites' incredible speed, so she has to make weaker constructs to react in time. If she's given the right amount of time, she could easily dwarf the strength of the strongest beings in the universe. And her powers, you know, like she would demolish it. Yeah. She did go against some of the alternative Invincibles, did she not? Yeah, that's true. The th and then, of course, Viltrumites. But like, and it, Viltrumites. It is, it is a matter of her being able to use her powers at the speed that would withstand the attacks from a Viltrumite. 
Throughout the series, she continues to grow even more powerful and at multiple points is not only able to help heal those who were near death, but she is actually able to completely revive someone from death and restore them to full health, including herself. Even when she dies of natural causes, her powers revive her back at full strength in her prime, so being immortal and continually growing more powerful as the years go by makes her potential truly limitless, and her ability to reach power beyond the most powerful beings in the universe is all but inevitable. At her hypothetical peak, she'd be at the level of someone like Dr. Manhattan, with ultimate power at her fingertips. And Robert Kirkman gives us more insight into Adam Eve's incredible power, stating that she can literally do anything, and that her powers are beyond what he is even able to convey in his writing. He also mentioned that Eve's only real issue with dealing with the most powerful Viltrumites is her speed disadvantage. As we mentioned earlier, while she does get stronger and faster throughout the series, so do Mark and the other Viltrumites. Mark goes from flying at Mach 1500 to far far beyond the speed of light later in the series. Eve is around Mark's level in speed throughout the series, but just slightly below him at all points. I hope that throughout the TV show that they sort of rework Adam Eve's story just a little bit because I do think she was sidelined a bit too much in the comics and they really get her flexing her full power by the end or at least something close to her full power. I hope when she does finally get in that altercation with Conquest, it's more of a spectacle than what we got in the comics. It, that's just my hope. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Remember to like and subscribe. It does really, really help us out. And remember the motto, it's Adam Eve over everything, and I'll see you guys next time.